back to Vegas and Apex where you got your first UFC contract. How much of this do you feel is a restart for you? Or are you building on any lessons you learned from the DQ win against Vargas? Um, you know, I feel like my whole, my whole career has is, is been a roller coaster, up and down, crazy stuff happening. Definitely these last two years, it's, um, I've tested my faith and, and, you know, my character as a man, but it's helped build me build me as a man, help build me as a warrior. And um that last fight, you know, uh looking back at it, um I felt I felt great going into the fight. I had a good camp, good weight cut, um uh, felt light in the fight. Uh, a couple of things went wrong, but you can never predict what happens in a fight. And um the the DQ cam, um I was getting up like I always get up, used the underhook. Uh I know the rules, so I don't protect my face. It's not pride rules. If it was pride rules, I would be getting up protecting my face, knowing that he can knee me to the face. But it happened. And um, I, I'm, if I get took down this fight, if I, I'm going to get up the same way. If he wants to knee me in the face and give me give me that win bonus and make me 2-0 in the UFC, I'll take that win too. I'll just have to suffer through the headache. I got some goodie powders back in the, uh, in the bag this time, so I'm well prepared for it. Well, we're glad that you're prepared. Listen, anyone who's followed your career um, is well aware that you are a member of the Moab Band of uh, Tribe. Any Who traveled with you this time? Did you get to bring anyone with you? No, um, just my coaches, uh, Jimmy Mills, head coach of Port City, and Randy James and Marcus Graham. Uh, not even my wife came this time because of the whole situation, you know. And uh, finally, for me, know that you're very close with your grandmother. How's your grandma doing back home? She's good. Uh, they're worried. Um, taking the fight on late notice, but they know I've been training. I've been quarantined at home, training in my and uh, in my backyard in the woods and the roots where I grew up on the res. And uh, I have a lot of people been coming out training with me. We opened up the gym at Port City this week and got a lot of rounds in. Uh, as soon as I took the fight Wednesday and. My grandma, uh, she's never watched a fight, uh, but she she can't take it, but uh, she believes in me, you know. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And we will take the next question from Danny Segura with MMA Junkie. Danny, please go ahead. Hey, Brock. Um, given the circumstances of your last bout, um, do you almost see this fight as your real UFC debut, given the fact that, you know, you, you didn't get to show much in, in the other fight? Uh, yeah, yeah, in a way, I got to, uh, this is my redemption fight, you know, uh, just reading, you can't help to read comments and stuff, but, um, I think, you know, like you said, I didn't get to show much, so, this fight, uh, I'm coming with a little anger, I'm coming, I'm bringing, I gotta bring that dog to this fight, I gotta show the world what I'm made of, you know, uh, everybody might think I'm a fluke, so I gotta show them I'm not. Mm. And what's the feeling like of, of I guess, is there like a frustration of getting in there and, and not being able to do what, what you usually do, given the fact that, you know, there was a, an illegal shot landed? Um, is that frustrating to finally get to the UFC debut and, and not be able to put on a full performance? Yeah. It, uh, I, even, even though how good I felt, I felt like something was going to happen eventually. It is either going to be my first or later on in my career, some crazy stuff's going to happen. So I look at it this way. Go ahead and get that crazy stuff over early, All right? Yeah, that's true. And uh, you you expressed interest in the rematch following the fight. Is that still something that's in your mind? I know you have a, a fight this Saturday, but is that still something you'd want to run back at some point? The only way I'll fight Rodrigo Vargas if they give us pride rules. <laughs> okay. And uh, this is going down at the apex. Um, you fought there, obviously, with, with Contender Series in the, the smaller cage. Is there an actual, like, tan tangible difference between the two as far as the effects that it can have on a fight? It's talking about the difference between the cage? Yeah, like fighting in a smaller cage, does it actually influence uh, the way a fight goes down, and do you have to adjust to that? The Contender Cage and the UFC cage are, are different sizes? Yeah, so um, this I one will be know. 25 feet. Yeah, well, this one will be 25 no, I guess, feet. I guess not. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, well, best of luck this this Saturday. Uh, looking forward to the fight, man. Yeah, for pre trade. We'll take our next question from Carlos Contreras, Millennio Diario. Carlos, please go ahead. Hi, Brock. Um, did Rodrigo apologize after what happened? I mean, uh, I saw you. I, I saw you talk to him a lot. And what did what did he tell you? Um, his English wasn't good, um, and I had a very bad headache. Um, but he apologized a little bit, and then he, I guess he wrote a post on his Instagram apologizing, saying that. He studied the way I got up on the contender, and he sees how he was aiming for my chest. Uh, but, I mean, if you watch the video, he pulled on the back of my head. Maybe he was using the back of my head to get a lot of force to the chest. Who knows? Uh, maybe it was an accident. Maybe, I don't know, you know. But uh, I forgive the guy. It, it, it's, it's with my faith to forgive the guy. Uh, no hard feelings. You know, I'm still alive. I can fight again. If Rodrigo gets to another chance and we meet again, like I said, we can do them under some pride rules, and that way I can, uh, it can be like a street fight. <laughs> and then we ain't got to have, the, then we ain't got to apologize for what happened. Thank you. And we will take our next question from Mike Heck with MMA Fighting. Mike, please go ahead. Hey, Brock, you get back at it this Saturday in a venue that you've already fought in, cage that you've already had a victory in on the Contender Series. Is this is there sort of a, a calming familiarity for you when it comes to this fight, knowing that you're one of the few fighters on the card that's already competed in this venue before? Yes. Uh, like I said, when I, when I heard it was going to be at the Apex, uh, uh, I, was, I was happy. It's, uh, I, got to wa I got to watch the fights. We won at the Apex, didn't get to fight because my opponent didn't make the weight, and then I come back and we gate and fought and won, and all that happened. And uh, it's, a, it's a very good venue. Um, uh, it, it's home to me. So I'm 1 0 there. I'm looking to make 2 0 Saturday, and uh, I already got a good feeling, man. It, it, everything's working out perfectly. I know that you've been itching to get back in there since the Rio Rancho fight and, and how that all ended. When, when the call came to fight in a week and a half or so, with that notice, how excited were you to just jump on that opportunity where your focus was simply on fighting and not really giving yourself any time to overthink anything? Yes, uh, I got the call um, for weeks now. Everybody in my reservation and hometown sees me at the store and grocery stores. Hey, man, when you fighting again? When you fighting again? I've been telling them like June or July is what I was thinking, and then something come to me the last week and was like. Just say any day now. So I've just been telling people for the last couple of days, any day now, any day now. And then Wednesday, uh, my manager, Abe, hit me up and said, May 20th, 10 days. You want it? I said, yeah, man. I, I, I've been telling everybody any day now. So that that's perfect for me. I really, I've really i been in quarantine camp. I've been training hard six days a week. Uh, I'm in great boxing shape, wrestling shape. Um, and great best strengthening cardio I've ever did. I've been dieting also. And uh, yeah, I was I was not looking forward to getting like a, a a call and saying, "Hey, sick, you got a six to eight week camp." I'm like, man, you know, I really didn't want to have to overtrain because I've been in the eight week, nine week camp since. So it was perfect. Ten days out, uh, I'm ready. How do you feel you match up stylistically with Roosevelt? He's been in the UFC, coming off the Contender Series like yourself. He's got some wins. He had the loss to Vince Pichel, but bounced back with a nice win in Moscow. How do you like the matchup from a stylistic perspective? I love it, man. He likes to box a little bit. He's, he 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 moves he moves good and decent. Um, I like to box. Uh, he doesn't do good with wrestling pressure and and boxing pressure going backwards. So uh, I'm I'm itching to show some of my wrestling this fight. Uh, I see that's his weakness, and uh, and, I, and I, of course I'm gonna bring the hand. So it, it's a great matchup for me. And uh, you know he he's got bout money wrote on his chest. So if he wants bout money, let's see. If, if he'll bring the fight, let's meet in the middle and uh, let's, let's both get 50K or one of us get 50K because I'm about that money too, even though I ain't got tatted on me. It's interesting you say that because I spoke to Roosevelt last week and he said normally he likes to have six weeks or so to prepare for a fight, but he felt like this would be a big fight for him. He, he knows you're a really good boxer and he says he has all the answers for that. How do you respond to that notion from your opponent this weekend? Pressure, bur pressure buzz pipes, bro. And, uh, I don't, I don't see he likes pressure too much. So 
I'm going I'm to see if he's got that dog in him, too. He, he said on one interview, if I want to bring that side out of him, then okay. I, you know, I want that side of him. I want whatever street thug warrior side he's got. I want that because, I mean, I'm, 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 from, I'm from the dirt, bro. Streets and dirt. You tell me which ones are. Thank you, Brock. All the best to you on Saturday. Thanks so much, Brock. That's all the time we had for you. You are good to go, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you.